What's up guys? Welcome back to the Team Soma Circus live video. It's on the left side here. We have Mimigul going up against Rescue Ace Azamina. This is going to be a deck that can utilize the Azamina Omni Negate while setting up big turbulence so we can kind of like punish our opponent that way. Before we dive on in, don't forget to like, comment, share the channel a lot. We are on the road to 10k when you guys support. We are going to be seeing the Azamina deck going to be one of the die rolls. Starting it off with a Wanted. This is going to give us access to the Diabell Stare, which can also give us access to the Deception of Sinful Spoils. We are going to be seeing the Diabelster send another Wanted to the Graveyard, summon itself out, and then we get to set a Deception. We then activate the Deception, sending either the Diabelster or another card in our hand uh, to the Graveyard to be able to search for the Hallowed Asmina. This is going to allow us to um, get that Omniate onto the field. We can either go for the Omniate or the one that lets us search, but since we already used the Wanted, we're going to most likely go for the Omniate. So we're going to activate the Hallowed Asmina here, summoning out the the uh the one that searches interestingly enough that's going to give us access to an oss so it looks like we do not have any lines for um, a copy of hydrant so we have to kind of go for it we can go oss here sending if we want to or uh we're going to kind of think on this so we're going to activate the hallow as an amino that's going to return the uh the Asamina Ultra, I'm not even pronouncing, trying to pronounce its name here. Um, and then we can then activate it once again, sending the OSS to the graveyard, summon out the Silvera or Sylvia. We can then banish the OSS that was sent off the Hallowed uh, to be able to search for our Hydrant, which can then be proceeded to normal summon and give us the effects, all while we we're protected by this Omni Gate, which is quite nice. We're going to be seeing the normal summon of a Hydrant activating its effects now, and we can search for a copy of. It looks like we're looking at our hand. I was going to say, perhaps an emergency, but going for a preventer here. We're then going to link away for a uh, copy of Anima. It is very unfortunate that we still have the uh, Link Kribo banned, but I think that card is just absolutely crazy and makes sense. We're going to go up into a closed moon, and then we're going to activate the effect. We're going to be banishing the... Uh, the hydrant there for the preventer, then when preventer touches the graveyard, we're gonna summon it back out here. We do go up into the Phoenix Pistol. We're also playing the Phoenix package as well, giving us into the Lacrima. Lacrima can send another engraver, and then we can have now access to a sequence which can give us another Omni Gate. So kind of cool having two Omni Gates onto the field to give us uh, a lot more resources. So we go up into the Princess, and then we are gonna take a second to read the Lacrima. This is gonna be another new card out of Rhoda. And the Mimical player doesn't really have anything here, but they could just have all gas in their hand to uh, kind of combat this. We're going to see Engraver put back the moon to summon itself out. And we could go for a Caesar if we wanted to, or we can just link up into our sequence here. Sequence can then summon out a Desiree. And we can link the sequence as well as the princess up into an SP as well. Or even going for a princess. We're going to be seeing the big turbulence in the hand as well. This is going to allow us now to set our four onto the field. Um, so ha having like the full, full setup there. All off of essentially one copy of uh, of Wanted. And then the Unknowns and a big turbulence in the hand as well. So pretty crazy here. We see them set all four. And we could link up into... Princess here, which is going to bring out the Terrorblades back from the graveyard, just being an additional body. Then you can negate the Princess, which we are going to be seeing us make. You can negate the Princess with the uh, Desiree here, and then we're going to be able to just like link away something else. We could go up into like an IP and then something else. We don't have Flame Birch in the deck, therefore it's going to be kind of hard. Uh, so we do choose now to link away into either a Raging Phoenix, perhaps, so that we have a fire to destroy off the Princess, but... We are thinking on this. I mean, our board is pretty big. There's not much that we can kind of link up into. That's going to be pretty useful. Now, if we still had Appaloosa in the game, thank God we don't. We could have linked away into like that, but we're going to be seeing that, unfortunately, being banned. Uh, but there's not other really good other targets to kind of go up into. Uh, you know, we could go with SP if we wanted to as well, but then we'd have to destroy the turbulence on the field for the fire attribute, and we don't want to do that at all. 
So we see we look away and they are taking a second to read the sequence. It is making it so that the Desiree cannot be targeted. We do choose to go up for that Raging Phoenix and then we're going to go wanted to put back the origin to the bottom of the deck and giving us an additional draw as well. Uh, now we can't set the deception onto the field because guess what? We have no spell and trap card tones. That's not going to be that much of a big deal here. Uh, so this was all off of one wanted as well as a turbulent and then a couple, I think two discards uh, there as long as you have like something else like you know, discard for the Diabell Star and a monster to send if you don't want to send the Diabell Star. But yeah, so a very nice board here. And can we see Mimigul find a way to kind of break it? You know, if there is a deck that can break it, it definitely would be Mimigul. Turbulence actually has like a crazy effect. Like, it's honestly insane that we have a set four from deck. So they are thinking on this. I mean, at the time, our opponent doesn't exactly know what we are playing. And so, we just see them shuffle it up, because I think they revealed one by accident or something. Uh, but we are going to activate Mimigul Dungeon here. We're going to take a second to read the Mimigul Dungeon, and that's not a good sign. That means we don't exactly know what the Mimigul cards do, which means it's going to be very hard for us to combat them uh, when we don't exactly know what these cards do. But Mimigul Dungeon is very good for uh, a starter, as well as going to be follow-up every single turn, being able to add back any of those Mimiguls from the graveyard as well and from the deck. It's not just on activation. So we are going to Desiree negate that there. Pretty decent Desiree, honestly. Uh, Desiree can also negate our own card, so I potentially would have maybe waited for um, you know, a, one of the Mimigul monsters on our field so we can negate the effects and make it so that our opponent doesn't get to, uh, get to activate or gets to have those effects as well as, like, you know, be uh, whatever effect it is, whether it's Cerberus, whether it's Slime, um, or whatever. We do see a Talents here, and we negate that with the Silvera here. So now we have gone through two of these negates, and... I'm not exactly sure what we activated. We did pass it over there. So we are seeing the server is going to be activated, which is going to be placing it face down on our side of the field. And then we do get the normal summon out the Archfiend, uh, or our special summon. I don't exactly know which one. I believe it is normal summon. It's going to activate the effect, trying to flip up that Cerberus. And here we learn about the fact that we are activating the effect, therefore it applies to our opponent. And so they're kind of forced to stop this, so we are going to go for a reinforce. And I believe this does negate. I'm not exactly sure on every single one of the rescue this card. We are going to go also for emergency. And we just see our opponent scoop it up, realizing that we have... Uh, lost the game, yeah. So, I mean, there's not much you can do against a set four double Omnidate uh, end board there, plus a Raging Phoenix and a Princess in the Graveyard. That's a very nice end board. Alongside over the hand traps we had in the hand. Like, we saw double uh, Wanted, which is going to be just two draws as well. Like, people are like, oh, well, you know, Wanted is kind of horrible to draw. No matter what, Wanted is just going to keep adding you back cards. Like, it replenishes itself super easily, as well as, like, the ability you can, like, Go Wanted, or you can go, like, Hallowed as Amina, activate the effect, Chain Wanted, um, and then, like, it sends on Resolution, which is just insane. Uh, I also, like, I love the the Wanted engine. I hope that Wanted does get hit, because, like, it is honestly just insane. Uh, you know, being able to now just chain the Hallowed as Amina, then go Wanted, um, or just go ha Hallowed first, and then Chain Wanted to get the search that card. You get essentially just sending a card for free, and I know the Deception, um, obviously, is a very good card and can just get access to it by resetting itself out. It's just not the same at all. You know, when you're getting that resources coming back to you um, and then, like, you just get the Search that card, you have, like, the uh, Deception, which can then be sent for the Diabell Star. 
Um, and then that's going to be setting itself again during the end phase. Like you have so much gas in this little one engine that I honestly think that's just absolutely insane. And it ends on an army gate, you know. With the original Sinful Spoils being able to be any level one fire deck, going to be able to get a resource out of it, there's no reason why you just don't want to play it. You know, we see Fire King Snake Eyes playing it. We see Snake Eyes. Uh, we see Fire King. And now we see even Rescue Ace going to be able to play these cards. Uh, I hope that they do come out with some more, like, fire decks. Being able to, like, have a level one fire that's kind of like your starter just kind of feels really nice. Especially when you have, like, bonfires and stuff like that. That lets you play. I mean, I don't necessarily think it has to be a pyro archetype. Um, but it can be, can be really fun. Kind of like brings the power of like the Diabell Star. Now I know it's like, oh, well then every deck has to play it. But when more decks can play it, it's just super fun, you know, especially when just different engines can end on different boards. I do like the Omni Gates of like the Silvera, which is just a super, you know, the engine's fairly cheap other than the Deception. And, uh, you know, Wanted to have definitely gone down in price. And I believe they're also in Bonanza as well. So it's going to be lower and lower. But diamond into game two, we are going to be seeing Mimigul going first with a normal summon of a dragon. Getting hit with an Imperm, they are going to be able to continue by playing that Mimigul dungeon here. And they're active the effect. We have Ash Blossom, and we can go Talents to draw two. Now, hopefully that draw two is going to be good because we are going to need it against two hand traps. Uh, we are going to activate. I don't know exactly when that was, but then we're going to set two and then pass. So now our opponent has a Mimigul monster they cannot special summon. Here, very important. They're going to be forced to kind of flip up that monster to kind of play the game. Unless they want to send it for Diabellstar. Uh, so we are going to take a second to read the card. And we have two face downs as well and one card in our hand. What's really cool is the Mimigul stuff is that we, we kind of uh, stop the ability to get like evenly matched we do have a cosmic and they just choose to hit one of the random back roads it was an imperm uh, so we have now not lost to one of those hand traps exchanging a card for a hand trap is pretty nice and then take a second to read the dungeon again they're like okay so i can't just special summon out we do go deception and deception can actually send here the archfiend to the graveyard so we definitely need to draw more of those cards it looked like archfiend is one that lets our opponent draw one and we get the discard one so Deception can send, which is really cool about this engine as well against the Mimmo Ghouls. You can actually just like get free advantage by not having to uh, to kind of do your stuff. And then we do go for the Hallowed. Hallowed going to be able to reveal and then send the Deception to summon itself. Uh, we can either go for the, the Bat one, which can let us search, which we are going to be using here. So we're choosing to go not for the Omni the Eight, but we do get hit with an Imperm there, which is going to be pretty fine, especially because we already have so much resources going. And it is at a 2,000. We then can activate the Hallow to put it back to the extra deck to then add itself back. And we do activate the Hallow sending another Deception from our hand here to go up into the Sylvaea. And then we just normal summon a copy of Hydrant. So we have full gas once again. This deck is sick. Maybe I should play this. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments section down below if you guys want to see some more matches. This was just a one-time duel that we were seeing at a locals. Uh, you know, trying to play some of these new Azamina cards. But this is insane. Like, being able to just a normal summon out your hydrant and getting the effect and not even needing to start going up for those, like, oh, original Snake Eyes plays to go up into it just kind of feels nutty. Uh, so we're going to see us go once again into the uh, hydrant. Then we're going to go up into a Preventer. Preventer's going to be now linked away to go up into a Moon. And we have the Fiendsworth engine now. We're going to be seeing Preventer summon out the hydrant. And then we're going to go up into the Requiem. Requiem is going to go up into our uh, Lacrima, most likely. Lacrima can then dump another Engraver. And we have the combo. So now we have two Omniates on the field, essentially. But the Dragon is going to be at 25 because of the dungeon there. So if we don't pay attention or we don't know that, it's going to be quite difficult for us to, uh, to kind of get that damage in here. So I wonder if we do know about that. We're going to go up into a sequence. Sequence is going to be putting back, allowing us to go for the Desiree. We can go for an SP, but then we can't attack directly. And I believe that Desiree is 28. So, I mean, if we just attack with that first, we will be fine. But if we go up into a Princess, Princess can bring out the Preventer. And then we can even book 
in the uh, Moogle dungeon if we or book the uh, Moogle dragon here if we wanted to. But we can go up into the sequence attached and then we can Desiree could negate the princess as well as the uh, field spell. But they're going to choose. Okay, we are going to attach the sequence. Then negate. It looks like just our princess here. Uh, I feel like you just negate the dungeon and then just go battle phase and essentially just win. But we're going to go up into a Zelantis instead. Interesting that we chose to do that. And we're seeing Desiree attempting to bounce back. And uh, yeah. The Mimical. Yeah, we should have definitely at least gone for Rager Phoenix first. Uh, but we are going to be seeing the Mimical player going to admit defeat there. They had a shifter in the hand as well off that desire. It's not looking the greatest. We do see Rescue Ace end up taking the win here. This deck was super cool. If you guys want to see me play it, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to stay safe. Peace and have a great day.